this is something the Lord has for us all. And I just, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but people are going to be listening to this out from here. And I just want to say, this isn't for the special people because we're all special people, right? He died for us all. If you're born from above, the spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of you. As he is, so am I in this world. So are you in this world. Now, you know, we, we grow in our maturation, right? Sometimes he has to remove things that are blocking us. Sometimes he has to put us in situations so we can steward those places. But it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So I'm just going to... This is not something that you're going to be able to... to Comprehend with your head. There's nothing wrong with being smart. <laughs> he really does use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. If you've used your mind to keep you safe, or you have to understand all this before you with what I'm going to share tonight. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't want us to discern, right? He expects us to take everything we hear here and anywhere else and bring it before him and search the word. So I'm not saying shut off your brain and believe everything. I'm telling you that's not what I'm saying. Be caught by your spirit first. Then it comes out through your mind in wisdom and understanding and knowledge, right? And I'm going to start by reading, because I want to frame this up, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 14. We have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. In other words, my paraphrase is, there's stuff we haven't heard of before in church. There's stuff we haven't thought of before. There's stuff we haven't imagined. that the Father has for us. That's what this is saying. So if you're waiting to understand or for it to be familiar, you're going to miss out on a lot of really cool stuff because the Spirit can take you where your mind has to follow. The, as we continue reading, but God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And this is not receive the things of the Spirit of God. That's our carnal nature, that Adam nature. Remember what tree he ate from? The tree of the knowledge. His own source. Instead of humble dependence on the Lord to say this is good and this is evil. He wants us to discern, to discern between good and evil. But he wants it to be out of that place of oneness with him, not out of the place of separation. Big difference. Like difference between the first Adam and the last Adam. Difference. Big difference. Difference between... He does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. They are discerned with the Spirit. And then they filter out through the understanding as we study to show ourselves approved by searching the word, by inquiring of God. So I just wanted to start with that. And Father, I just let's all just do this. Let's clear this. Father, we all repent from, for eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For out of that place of separation, standing at a distance and wanting to be the one to judge what we know and what we don't know, what we believe and what we don't believe, instead of humbly depending on you and inquiring of you, and, and leaning on you. We repent, Father, for leaning to our own understanding instead of just asking you. 
and letting you teach us. We repent, Father, for putting our mind in places it was not created to be. For using it as a self-protection, using it to keep ourselves safe, using it to control situations instead of leaning on you in childlike trust. We just repent. We put the blood on that. And we just decree and declare we are not of the first Adam. Like Connie and Sean have been teaching these last couple of weeks, we are your seed. We are your children. So we just give you permission to order us rightly. We open our hearts to you. We open our spirits. And we thank you that as we and be able to comprehend the things of your spirit as you teach us. Amen. All right, so I think we, we got, he got us in divine order here. of hearing me teach about, but I want to frame this up. There's a couple new people here. Um, it's 1 John 2, 12 through 14. Most of you guys that have been around for a while know this is our maturity map scripture. I write to you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you fathers because you've known him who's from the beginning. I write to you young men because you've overcome the wicked one. I write to you little children because you've known the father. I've written to you fathers because written to you young men because you're strong and the word of God abides in you and you've overcome the wicked one. So if you've been around a lot, then um, this probably feels like a broken record, right? But we know from these verses that the child phase of maturation has to do with identity, right? You're and again, you're the righteousness of God in Christ. Your sins are forgiven. There is no condemnation. He that is born of God doesn't sin. Now that, that dead repent and we start living out of who we are instead of living out of who we're not. That's child stuff. Young man phase is about overcoming your personal adversary. Some of you guys that have started coming here engaging with sonship, you know, more mature things, anybody start, you know, dipping your toe in that water and all hell breaks loose in your life? Michael, okay. <laughs> That's because you can't be an overcomer without overcoming something. Just saying. Doesn't mean the devil's winning. Now, we know he's the author of evil, right? God isn't. But it filters through the Father's hand unto our overcoming. God doesn't smite us with evil, but he does give us opportunities to overcome. of our maturation process. The father phase has to know, has to do with knowing the one who is from the beginning, the eternal realm. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. I'm going to take you guys on a little journey with me to a place that the father's been taking me in the current classroom that I'm in. I'm going to lay a real short foundation, but most of this, you know, we've had luffies, most of us have full bellies, we're going to keep it short, but most of this is going to be just engaging with this place. And your homework is going to be to keep going back here by to give to to leave us with real practical hand hands-on kind of stuff. Um, next time I teach, we're going to talk about some real practical things when it comes to centering, breathing, medi biblical meditation, uh, the imagination, all those kinds of things, creating structures for the things we're experiencing in the heavenly realm to manifest. We're going to talk about that. But tonight, we're just going to go on a little journey. Yeah? So, some of you guys have heard me um, talk about the classrooms that I've been in in the spirit. And it was kind of a duh thing for me because... that my classrooms of the spirit were these, these maturation phases. You know, I, you know, I was so close to the forest, I couldn't see the trees. And so some, you know, a lot of you guys have heard me share about how a few 
not exactly what you want to hear from the Lord, but he gave me the solution and he sent me to summer school. And he really did. So he kind of helped me, for the most part, a lot clear my schedule, a lot clearer than it is now. And every morning at five, I would get up and I would end up in this classroom in the heavenly realm. Now I want to say, our, our maturation phases and encounters are not all going to be the same. You might end up in a classroom. Okay. With you, you know, he's going to speak to you according to your DNA and your destiny and who he's created you to be. But there are general overarching principles, right, that govern these things. So if you haven't, I haven't been in, the Lord didn't send me to summer school, don't go there, okay? <laughs> these are, this is just, how, this is what his light looks like when it flows through the prism of me, the prism of me. It's going to look different when it flows through you. But what I want you to catch here are the overarching principles and the understanding that these places, the many mansions in his heart, they're limitless places in the realm of the Spirit, in the Father's heart for all of us. And you're going to have your own journey. But mine is, you know, I, I was in this summer school, and um, it was my, my sonship child phase, basically. And it was mostly about interacting with Yeshua, and I was being mentored by the seven spirits. When I graduated from this classroom, the Lord granted me access to begin walking with the Father on the ancient paths. And Enoch is always there with us, and that's some, I'm not going to get into that tonight. But this led me into a king's classroom. And I didn't realize until just recently, oh, that was young man. And I really, I tell you, I really had trouble with this classroom. Summer school was easy because that was, that was child stuff. And it was fun. Uh, king's classroom, not so much because I had to learn to govern my own world with wisdom and intent. And how many of you know that's easier said than done sometimes? <laughs> so I struggled with this classroom so much, the Lord let me dual enroll in my co-creation classroom, which was the next one. He really did. I mean, it sounds so funny, doesn't it? But that's really what he told me. He did it so I wouldn't lose heart, you know, the carrot, so I could see what was coming so I wouldn't get discouraged because I was going around this mountain so many times. But I finally did graduate. Now, again, that doesn't mean that I don't still interact with the seven spirits. That doesn't mean I'm still not doing some of the things. We, we don't leave our foundations. We add to our foundations as we go on to maturity, right? So we still grow in our kingship always. But there are particular emphasis in our growth. And so when I would go in this king's classroom, um, I would always see these curtains. I mean, this goes back years. The curtains were living curtains, and they had, they had the, the cherubim faces on them. And I never understood why the curtains of this classroom looked like that. But it was so cool. And I, when I'd be in there and just struggling and whining and in and out and all this stuff that we do, I just couldn't stop staring at these living, they were living curtains. And it was like four or five years later, maybe, that I finally understood why the curtains looked that way. And this was about, you know, learning to govern my life and all that the Father has entrusted me as a king and not as a slave, as a son rather than an orphan from heaven to earth. And, you know, this was mostly about walking with my Father. He was the primary voice. I mean, of course, you know, I interacted with Jesus and Holy Spirit, but during the season, Father was the one that was more interacting with me. When I finally, well, I didn't even realize that I had graduated from this classroom, but you guys heard me talk about this a few weeks ago that this one day I'm just, you know, praying and stuff, and all of a sudden I get tattooed by the four faces, right? It was lion. I'd have to look in my journal, which I think it was lion, eagle, ox, man, or some ox man or something. I'd have to look. I got tattooed by them, and then as, and, and as soon as I did, the elements came, fire, earth, wind, and water, and they, they came and said, we're here to serve you, to help you co-create with the Father, with the heart of the And I'm not even understanding any of this. I'm like, I'm writing in my journal as fast as I can, and my mind is not processing all this. But after I got back away from it, then I realized a rite of passage, the cherubim curtains. I realized I'd graduated, and I was like, yay, party for me. And what happened after that, it was like weeks before I figured out what happened. I mean, you know. 
But hey, you know, when you're pioneering stuff, it, there's grace, right? I, I mean, who have you heard talk about? I mean, I mean, there's some people that are talking about this, but I hadn't heard anybody talk about that. So, after this happened, I realized, oh my goodness, I graduated from this king's classroom in spite of myself. <laughs> Amen. Doesn't that encourage all of you? <laughs> He's just like that. He's so amazing. So this has led me to a co-creation classroom that I have been in for the last few months. And I, that I've, like I said, I've gotten glimpses of for years but wasn't ready to steward. And this classroom has to do with the father phase of sonship. And again, I'm still, learn, I'm still growing in my kingship, of course, but now he's adding another layer to that. And in this, I would have thought that the father phase, the, that the father would be the primary one, wouldn't you? But the primary one in this classroom has been Holy Spirit, has been Ruach. Because it's a co-creation classroom, it's a womb. And I just figured that out too. And so remember 1 John 2. Fathers know him who is what? From one. Where is in the beginning? Well, how about we read about it in Genesis 1? That's in the beginning, right? So I'm going to read it in the amplified version. I'm sorry I don't have all these cool slides, but you just have to use your ears. In the beginning, God, Elohim, created by forming from nothing the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void or a waste and emptiness, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, primeval ocean that covered the unformed earth. The Spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, we learned some of this from Dr. O. Uh, I forget which time when he was with us. But remember, he talked about the tohu wabohu. Okay, if you look in that phrase in Genesis 1, if you look it up in the Hebrew, formless and void, it's a, I forget the word for it in Hebrew, but it's two rhyming words that are paired together, but they both mean the same thing for emphasis. Um, and it, it, they, it means formless and void. So we know from Ecclesiastes 3.11 that God has placed what in our hearts? Eternity. Do you really believe that? Okay. So when we access this in the beginning place, we're accessing the eternity or Jesus said this in Luke 20, uh, in 17, 21. He said the kingdom of God is within, within you, right? So he's placed eternity in our hearts and the kingdom of God or the realm of eternity is within us. Now, do you understand why I said you can't catch it with your mind first? Understanding and the revelation will come when you're ready for it to come. I remember the first time I heard Ian Clayton speak. Sean and I had him come in twice in 2010. And I sat there going, is this guy speaking English? But my spirit was going, I want all of that and more, right? That's how this works. So we do, we access eter this eternity, this place of eternity, the kingdom within, as we grow into the fullness of our oneness, right? At salvation, we become what? One spirit, right? Isn't that what the Bible says? That if we're born from above, we become one spirit with him. So we grow into the fullness of our oneness as what he has done to our souls, right? That's when we deal with our junk. Right? And it comes from that place, you know, Sean and Connie have both really been hammering it. The divinity that he's made us to be. Not the Lucifer kind of I will be like the Most High that Adam chose. I'll be like God without God. This is humble dependency and realizing in my flesh dwells, dwells no good thing. But he, I've died. And it's his life living through me as I yield. That's what the, that's the one's the counterfeit. This is the real. So this we access this place as we grow into the fullness of that oneness and that that new creation, right, is worked out into our access to the realm of eternity. That's why he said, "I'm the door." John ten. What was he talking about? We know he's the only way to the Father. He's the only way to the door to eternity. He's the door to the realms and dimensions. 
So you might be saying, why do I care about tohu wabohu? What does that mean for me? I just want to know how I'm going to pay my grocery bill next week. Okay. Why do I care about this? I'm going to throw a couple things at you, and then we're just going to jump in. But this is why you care about this. Because we access and govern time from eternity. Anybody wish for 28 hours in your day? Anybody that knows me? All the time. And <laughs> I always tell, I always tell uh, Connie and, you know, my friends or Sean or whoever, I'm, I, I always tell You just got to keep open. Time management can be helpful from a standpoint of governing with wisdom instead of squandering, squandering our time foolishly. Okay. So there has a place for it, but only governing time from time is going to produce limited and inconsistent results at best. To really govern time, we have to do it from the place of eternity with us, within us where there is no time. So when the Lord first took me here, I tried it. And I tell you, it was night and day. I sat, and I, I'm going to walk you guys through what it looked like for me just to give you a grid for it so you can step into it however he leads you. So I'll do that in a minute. But I just drank from this well of eternity. Creation classroom in the spirit, and I pulled eternity into time. And literally, it was like I had more time. It works. What we do in the heavenly realm is real, and it works. It's more real than the chair you're sitting in. And what you do in the heavenly realm affects the earth. It's a spiritual law. It now, it may not be like that. Right? You might have, it might reveal some things, some blockages that you have to deal with. You might have to grow and work some muscles or whatever. But it is a spiritual law that what you engage with in the heavenly realm will manifest in the earth. Manifested quickly. I've had other things that took longer to manifest, but this manifested very quickly. When we drink from the limitless flow of eternity and bring it into time, we'll always have more than enough. And that's not just true of time. That's true of every resource. Everything that we need, we can drink it in in this place. Now are you a little more interested in the tohu wabo? Oh. Another reason that is that as little e Elohim, we co-create from nothing accessing everything. I mean, that's what he did. Formlessness and void. We do that too. But we can do it from that realm by drinking of that realm and pulling it into this realm. And I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll give you more details later. Another reason is that submitting to his devouring fire in this place of nothingness prevents us from creating carnal things or small things. You know, we're in a huge transition. And the temptation, you know, God is dismantling all obvious, isn't it? He's dismantling the church system. So we're here and we're kind of like, I don't know what to do. I know what, we, I, know what I did like 20 years ago and it was fun, but his, 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 the cloud has moved and I don't really know where it moved. He's dismantling that we covered. He's, he's dismantling those things. So the reason that we want to go into this place of utter devouring where he annihilates us like as in not I but Christ, is so we don't create small carnal things that end up causing us to go around the mountain again or things that end up being a blockage or a hindrance, an Ishmael. We don't want to birth an Ishmael. So when we go into this place, and this is what we're going to do tonight, we let him completely annihilate us. And what's left We let him, we let the, our God is a consuming fire. Why? He wants to consume our limitation. He wants to consume our 
can understand, what we can pull off in our own strength, what we can even imagine, because all of it's too small. Another reason, and I've, I've started to tap into this too, uh, because in I'm surrounded, I went into this classroom, and the curtains of this classroom are like the galaxies and the cosmos as far as your eyes can see. But I sit in this classroom, and I'm surrounded by this storm, and it's this crazy, like a tornado. I'm in the middle of it. And there's lightning and thunder and, like, electricity. It looks like static. And there's, like, there's like body parts, uh, like, for creative miracles and stuff. There's all kind of stuff in this storm. But if I don't stay in the middle of it, you know, you know, in the eye of the storm is perfect calm. But if you kind of, boy, you know, it's not fun. And I've, I've done that a few times, and I'll go back and I'll crawl back into my classroom, and wisdom's like, you lost your balance yesterday. Okay, get up and try again. You've got to stay centered. And I'm going to talk about centering because it's a real thing. And I'm going to show you how to do it. I may not get to that tonight, but it's real and it helps. But in this place, chaos doesn't, anybody ever feel like the world chaos, maybe work chaos or family chaos or just stuff going on in the world? Have you ever felt like that? I think we all have. There's a lot of just stuff swirling in, in, in the world today. In this place, we can access the technology for that stuff to not, no longer derail or dissipate. I kept hearing the word dissipation, right? Because I felt like I was pulled in a million directions, and I felt like I was getting devoured. Instead of letting that happen, when I, I'm, the Lord's teaching me to go into this place, instead of it, the, the chaos pulling me apart, I consume its energy. Because it's a vortex. It's a portal. So in, and, and I just connected this dot like two days ago. In, 20, in January of 2022, um, I was sitting with the Lord, and he says to me, his presence just, just came real heavy, and he says, um, I'm inviting you into the place from which there's no return. Trading floors open. The place from which there's no return. He said, I'm inviting you into my heart, the black hole of my heart from which there is no return, and it was the Holy of Holies, and everything was getting sucked into him. And I said, Lord, I, I don't want to... No, he said, the place from which there's no escape. That's what he said. And I said, Lord, I don't want to escape you. And I've held that in my heart. He showed me some cool stuff about it, but when I was in this devouring vortex... And I, he started teaching me, chaos doesn't devour you in this place. You consume it, and you gain energy. It's the Holy of Holies. This is what he was inviting me into. I get to step into this vortex, and I get to become it. And the Lord showed me, this is what Jesus did at the cross. Remember, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 54 says what? Death was swallowed up up in victory. So I'd had this encounter that I'm going to read to you guys, and then I had gotten in the car, and in the car on the way back, he dropped that scripture in me, and I saw Jesus on the cross, and he was this vortex, and everything was getting sucked into him. Chaos, time, sickness, sin, everything. Father's heart, it's the holy of holies. It is this place from which there's no escape, but it's us out of our oneness with him. We get to operate in that too. Everything gets... Time is swallowed up in eternity. Death is swallowed up in life, in victory. Everything we need, we access from this place. Isn't this amazing? Amen. We imagine... And we still do that stuff, but the Lord's it's more of a punch because from this place. So in this place, we can be in on the pre. 
themselves. And everything gets pulled. Once we have an earthly structure for it to be pulled into, that's what we in this out. I'm still learning some of the, the mechanics of it, but this is exciting stuff. This is a huge technology for us to be able to use. Of, of how this brings victory in our natural lives yet, but if we keep showing up in these places, it will manifest. So when I first, I told you about the classroom, you know, I saw this whirlwind and all this crazy stuff, and then I moved from just observing it to being it. And then wisdom, this is how I figured out where I was, because I'm just seeing this whirlwind, and I'm watching myself being in it, and then all of a sudden, and then when that happened, I heard wisdom say, welcome to Tohu Wabohu. And I was like, whoa. Oh, thank you. And I became beyond still. And the fierceness of the storm was raging around me with this fury that I can't even describe. And it was rest. It's not passivity. It's yielded intent. You know, he's surrounded by a storm, isn't he? Well, so am I. So are you when we're in him in this place. And spirit, the Ruach was brooding over this void. This was the place Ru Ruach was brooding over. The Lord started connecting dots with songs about the overshadow. And I realized he gave those to me in seed form. I didn't even understand them, but I nurtured them. I sang them a million times, and now I've stepped into them. Now I have the understanding. My spirit caught it 20, 25 years ago, and I just knew, okay, and now I'm in it. Now I'm living it, and he's teaching me about it. Not because I'm spiritual. Not I've got the same spirit in me that you have in you. I just kept showing up. Keep saying yes. Keep showing up. So the storm that's around him is the storm that's around you. And this is the place of co-creation where something is formed from nothing just like that. We access eternity. It's the vacuum that pulls the invisible into the visible. We absorb the peaceful stability and we drink in eternity, right? And we do that. Of com complete annihilation. I saw some of you were like, I'm not sure I signed up for complete annihilation, <laughs> but I'm going to kind of explain this. Um, as I sh kept showing up here, I just, I don't know, a couple weeks or something. And then I consumed the essence as I kept consuming this essence of nothingness. I don't even know how to explain that. I started noticing that the molecules of my physical body started to come apart. Now, I wasn't afraid there's nothing but peace in this place. And I realized that from this form or no form, right? Jesus did it. He walked through the crowd that was trying to stone him. They thought he was the gardener. Think of the implications of what I just shared. We've been talking a lot. Connie's been talking a lot. We sang it tonight. We're light beings. Well, what is, I am the light of the world. That means I have a bumper sticker on my car or, or a T-shirt. No, there's way more than that. I am a light being. You're a light being. Think of the implications of what that really means. Like Connie said, get out of Sunday school. You are the light of the world. He wasn't kidding. Really think about that. This is the gospel. This is what Jesus died to give us. It wasn't just a ticket to heaven when we die. We don't have to die. Death isn't the door to heaven. Jesus is the door. Right? This is what he died to give us. So in this place, our physical form is malleable, can take on any form. My physical body is no longer a static form or a physical prison. Anything I think I can become here. And when I started to realize this, the, the spirit of the fear of the Lord descended on me real heavy. I felt the weight of that. You know, in past seasons, you know, haven't we all decreed and declared some really stupid stuff? <laughs> yeah. Don't look at me. 
answer that prayer. I decree in Jesus' name. And then you look back on it and you're like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Well, I felt the weight of that in this place. Like I can't just flippantly just, because anything I think here, I, I, it will, I will become, it will become. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord was so heavy. And this is why the entryway, I, some of you guys were part of ATR and others of you were new, but this is when we still met at the IHOP building downtown. And there was one night, the prophetic song, you might remember this, Andre, the, the prophetic song, know the entryway is guarded by the cherubim with flaming swords of fire. Do you guys remember that? And he just kept singing it over and over and over again. And I'm like, I don't understand this. I knew it had to do with e Eden, right? And, and that, you know, not allowing fallen man to eat from the tree of life so he lives forever in a fallen state. I knew that was a manifestation of God's mercy. But this is that. So that was, what, 2017 maybe? So this is that. This is why the entryway to this place is guarded by the fiery swords. We're allowed here not because we're smart, not because we're talented or gifted or super spiritual, but because our will has become his and his ours, because we're one. And access is granted as we live the crucified life where he's doing the living through us. And the Father said, this is why I dismantled your old way of thinking, praying, and ministering. It was too small. Now let's create together. showing up wisdom kind of showed up and was kind of funny she was like um hint hint why don't you let me filter what you're pulling from the realm of eternity me twice right so we live the crucified life not i but christ his, his what he had and nothing to lose we lose our life to find it. That's how this works. And we engage with wisdom and allow wisdom to filter what we create in this place so we don't create a monster. And I felt the weightiness of this. I'm going to read this directly from my journal. Is that okay? Because I'm, ha I'm still trying to find the words for all of this. But when I was writing, it was coming out just, you know. So I'm just going to read a little bit of this. I'm going to read something from the Lord, and then we're just going to step in. Vortex, I consume the energy of the tohu wabohu. I let go of the rigidity of materiality, allowing my makeup to be whatever we say to let there be. I rest in the whole emerging from nothing and order emerging from divine chaos. In this place, I can be whatever I desire. Like Yeshua, I can disappear, the crowd, disappear through the crowd or appear like the gardener or look like someone completely different like he did on the road to Emmaus. Parts and pieces divinely ordered beyond my finite understanding. Within the storm, I take in the same movement as every minuscule part of me dances with the rhythm of the creator at work. My atoms and subatomic particles are moldable in his hand like clay in the hands of the potter. Everything is easily changeable here. Everything is possible here. Yet, a sacred privilege to be here, and I feel the gravity of his trust. Elohim, Elohim speaking the, as three in one, says to me, what shall we create, my love? And the fear of the Lord over me, and I, knowing the smallness of my own thoughts, defer to his higher and most magnificent wisdom. I know that there will come a time when he expects me to do as I've seen him to do, but this is not that time. This is a time to be humble, to sit in awe and wonder of his ways. I know there will come a time when this answer will no longer suffice, but for now, it is the pathway for learning and growing beyond. In response, I spread my wings out over all he has entrusted to me and breathe. I sat in the eye of the storm. Not only am I unconcerned by external chaos, I consume its energy to increase the life vortex of tohu wabohu that pulls everything into itself. My agreement causes me to become that vortex because the flow of eternity within me is stronger than the pull of time and temporality outside of me. It is pulled into me rather than me being pulled in every direction.
The Father said this to me, and this is for all of you guys. So this isn't just me. He's saying this to all of us as we grow into these realms and dimensions in his heart. He said, child, don't be afraid of the tohu wabohu, the formlessness and void that my spirit broods over. In this place, place, it is the nothing that gives birth to everything. This necessary dismantling does not mean that you failed me. Even the way you walked with me must experience that bring forth the new. The closer to the birth, the closer together they are. You have experienced the glories of harvest seasons when fruit was mature and enjoyable. But I said plainly that a pruning, pruning follows great fruitfulness unto greater fruitfulness. Do not despair, just stand, breathe, walk with me on the ancient paths, stay in the center of the whirlwind, for even the slightest imbalance will bring chaos. I'm pouring out grace to maintain, but I'm not pouring out grace to build yet. There is a storm coming. I will protect you, and I will always provide and care for you. And on the other side of the storm, the world will look very different. And in this new world, you will build, and you will be things well. Uncertainty and lack of clarity can create anxiety, but if you will press into the uncertainty, dancing in the devouring flame and consuming the nothingness, it will be spiritual energy and sustenance to you because it is what I am doing. Don't you know that my present feel thing? The harsh north winds feel different from the gentle south winds, but both are my breath. Sit in the center of the whirlwind, child, and consume the nothingness that brings forth everything. Humans fear nothingness and avoid annihilation, but you're not a human, are you? <laughs> you're my DNA, my Elohim, and we do not fear or avoid the tohu wabohu. It is our blank canvas upon which we create. Soon this place will be a place of unshakable rest for you. You will be unmoved by the natural and spiritual storms surrounding you. You will no longer be depleted or devoured, but will be nourished and energized by the void. In this place you will be still and know that I am God. You will rest in me, allowing my spirit to brood over Enoch was not, and I took him. Embrace and rejoice in the disappearance of all you have known and all you have been, even those precious things I gave you and did in and through you. Do not try to hold on, for that just prolongs the process. My devouring flame will have its way. In this place, you are to let go of all you know and all you think you know, of all you are and all you have been and will become. You have said yes to my command to let go of small thinking. The problem is that you don't, don't know what thinking is small, and it all is. So let it all go here in this place. Don't analyze or critique or even inquire, inquire concerning what is old and natural body, for it is from nothing that I create. Men create from other things, and that is good. But Elohim, him, capital E, slash, little e, creates something from nothing. Man thinks that stepping into eternity means that it's a minute distillation of eternity. And physical substance is just a minute dis distillation of this essence over which I brood, That was for all of you. Now, some of you guys might be like, I don't understand a word of that. That's okay. If you're, if you're like, Phew. in your spirit in seed form. And it will produce fruit if you just keep saying yes to him. A deposit was made in you that will produce the fruit of this. And it's not about you saying yes to me. It's about you saying yes to whatever is of him, and you let him sift it. We're all in process, right? We're learning and, we're learning and growing, right? So if you've got a yes in your heart to him, a seed went in your spiritual womb that will produce fruit of eternity within time. You just keep, you just keep saying yes to him. So we're going we're gonna to all go here, here together. We're just going to play some music and, you know, feel free to slip out. I'm going to probably just um, talk you guys through a little bit of stuff. But for the most part, we're going to be quiet. Slip out if you want to slip out. If you do slip out early, your homework is to keep going to this place. Now, 
you might see in here, you might not. And Sean says it so well um, often, blessed are those who believe even though they don't see. Now, God does want those that are wherever you are in your process, whatever the why, you just continue to believe until your seer eyes are open. We are going to pray that your seer eyes will open before we start playing the music, though, because he does want it, he does want you to see. But if you don't, it's okay. You step in by faith. Spirit in this, he might lead you just to say yes to it, and then maybe he's got you on another trail, and maybe he'll bring this back around in a year or ten years. So he's the one that governs your process. But you just yield of this and then you take you let him lead you from here you might just step in by faith you might see you might go in and experience exactly what I described that's great you might experience something that's unique to you I don't know Holy Spirit lives inside of you that's his business that's between you and him the next time I teach I'm going to give you some practical things that have to do with I share this with a structure for manifestation and decreeing and declaring out of this place into the earth. And uh, the Lord gave me, um, he connected some dots for me about when he put Abraham to sleep. And what happens in our physical brain is pretty, it's you guys just to be acquainted. The goal for tonight is for us to go here together and for you to be acquainted within the beginning. And for you to know, not know, intimate knowledge with the one who's from the beginning, your father. He's your father. He's your father. It is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So do you have something to share? Oh, um, just play. Um, it's, yeah, it's a, uh, is that, is it 715 or 815? <gasps> Okay. I'm in the in, in eternity when there <laughs> there's no time. Uh, just skip to um, eternal spirit, Sean. Skip that first one. So this is just an instrumental. So get comfortable if you want to close your eyes. The sons of God are led by the Spirit. So do his desires are your desires. Do what you want to do. So first, before we start the music, Father, I just release right now. I spread my wings from the heavenly realm. I spread my wings out right now over everybody under the sound of my voice, both in time now and outside of time. And those who are going to those who are listening by live stream, those who are going to listen later, I just spread my wings out over them, and I just say, um, spiritual eyes open. We just release the fire of God into everyone's imagination gate. 